Week three of the Six Nations, and we are at the halfway stage. And in Paris last night. Big backs. Met even bigger backs. But ultimately, it was the little men that decided it. Still a chance for Wales, and surely a try for Wales for Dan Bigger. My man of the match is not French. Saint-André, what are you doing? You know, you need to learn how to play rugby. Go back to school, we don't need you. You know, get someone who can do the job, you know? Ah, oh, Dan Bigger, great job. That's a very good evening to David, who's our French, but it takes a very brave man to come into a Scrum 5 clubhouse wearing a French shirt, but he's done it very well. David is from Paris, now living in Newport. He couldn't make it up. <laughs> Wonderful. You're very welcome, David. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. We've asked Sean Hawley to take a closer look at last night's game. Wales had plenty of X-Factor about them in Paris yesterday as they played with an assured and confident manner and provided key moments in the game to snuff out the French. Jamie Roberts was at his thunderous best, especially in the first half, as he put his body on the line with 11 barnstorming carries, working in harness with centre partner Jonathan Davis, and it set the tone for the French defence. The line-out functioned a lot better. Alan Wynne-Jones showed utter class and leadership here. Wales used the driving mall to give the French a taste of their own medicine, a potent weapon in obtaining modern-day penalties that dead-eye halfpenny can keep the scoreboard ticking over. Gatland's selection proved inspired with Scott Baldwin fronting up, but the dynamic experience off the bench proving crucial in this vital scrum. Look how Paul James and Richard Hibbard work in tandem to pressure the French tight head with Samson Lee staying square and shearing away for the penalty. Enter Lee Halfpenny. France persisted with kicking tactics that Wales and the wily Rhys Webb had covered. And they were able to turn defence into attack, with Rhys Webb again dangerous on the fringes, some sublime touch from Dan Lydiot and a cutting-edge angle from Bigger for his try. To epitomise the warrior-like attitude of these players, Robert stepped up again when it mattered as the French threw everything they had to salvage a draw. But Wales are predictable when they attack from the sidelines. They nearly always play slowly to three static forwards in a gain-line attritional battle. Defences are now waiting for this and are targeted in this area for turnover and penalties. If Wales are to score more tries in attack, this is a key area they will need development and some variety if they are to avoid the defensive jackals of Ireland. Yet more top analysis from Mr Holly.